Thank you, madam. So uh, thank you for this opportunity and I'm delighted to be here with you all uh, to talk on come to medicine as a career. So uh, the outline of the lecture would be, we will be briefly looking at what community medicine is and how does it differ from the curative sector and why is it important? And what are the core functions and 10 essential services? Very briefly, I'll take you through that. And how is public health structured in Sri Lanka to deliver these core activities? And what are the responsibilities at provincial level and also local level and are uh, the career opportunities? Uh, so I briefly tell uh, what is health and what is public health. So the definition of health is it's the dynamic state of complete physical, mental and spiritual well-being and not mere the absence of disease or infirmity. And what is public health? So uh, public health is what we as a society do collectively to assure the conditions in which people can be healthy. Okay, so the difference between the curative sector and the uh, preventive sector, the curative sector uh, saves one life at a time, but the preventive sector, we attempt to prevent save millions of life at a time. So, sorry. Uh, So community medicine in Sri Lanka uh, is a postgraduate medical specialty in Sri Lanka and it's uh, related to uh, preventive uh, and public health. Uh, as community medicine is a branch of medicine, it should necessarily include a medical component within it. It addresses the needs of both ill and well population at grassroots level in the community uh, and the degrees are Doctor of Community Medicine, which was found uh, in 1970s, and Master of Science, found in 1980s. So we have a very long history. And we are one of the very few specialties that has a job description, and the general circular is uh, I have given on the slide. And CCP trained will be uh, working in the national programs as well as in the provinces and district level. So what are the essential services? The scope of services delivered, uh, delivery of a CCP is determined based on principles of essential public health services. So what are the essential public health services? There are about 10. Right, And these 10 uh, principles are broadly categorized into assessment, policy development, analysis, and assurance. Our key tasks would include public health program management, public analysis, policy analysis, and policy development, strategic planning, advocacy, raising awareness on health, surveillance, monitoring and evaluation, quality assurance of public health programs, training and capacity buildings and fund mobilization. And most importantly, researching all three core functions are also important. Uh, so this is to give new insights and innovation solution to health problems that we encounter. COVID-19 is a nice example for this. So I mentioned that uh, uh, we have good indicators. So what are good indicators? Uh, life expectancy is around 76 and we have uh, tried to end or prevent the maternal deaths as much as possible and low infant mortality rates. Our immunization programs is world class and we control communicable diseases, elimination of severe diseases, strong tobacco control measures, so on and so forth. Uh, Sri Lanka has achieved favorable health outcomes at low cost and with the contribution of its manpower. And we are a successful model that the world follows and talks about. So we didn't do it alone, but worked with everyone else to achieve this. So I, as I mentioned to you earlier, the CCPs and trainees of Come to Medicine currently engage in serving national programs, national programs as well as provincial and regional directors of health units. 
this is the structure within the center. Uh, that's the Minister of Health. So I just wanted to give you a, uh, how we would be placed within the ministry. And I briefly wanted to show the peripheral setup. Right. So about opportunities. Once you are a consultant committee physician, you can work in the UN bodies, UN agencies, the WHO, UNICEF, IOM, etc. And also funding bodies, World Bank, ADB, and also can become an academic training of undergraduates and postgraduates, uh, postgraduates. So a well-functioned public health program has the following features, strong partnership, where partnership recognize they are part of the public health system, effective channels of communication. We have to be a good communicator, broad vision, mission and goal, resources, like the utilization of resources that we have, leadership skills, feedback loops, and also to monitor and evaluate the system. So why am I telling you this? As you can see, uh, to improve the health of a population is just not a person's work. It's a team effort. We have many stakeholders. Teamwork is therefore compulsory. Expertise is necessary. And there are many new opportunities in this field of come to medicine. So come to medicine. Do we have challenges? Of course we do. Increased prevalence of uh, and burden of non-communicable diseases and also controlling communicable diseases such as influenza, TB, dengue, the emerging well ones as well as the existing ones. Nutrition related problems, improving the efficiency and also quality of healthcare system is critical to benefit most Sri Lankans. For this, we need innovation results, monitoring, and capacity building in the health sector and the right team member. So who is, who would be a right team member? He's who he is, dedicated, organized, and a person who thinks out of the box and a team player. So career pathways. Community medicine is a medical specialty bridging the curative services within the community and with the wellness promotion, prevention of health. Through some, um, though some countries have just started on nurturing such a bridging specialty, Sri Lanka is well advanced stage in this. So during COVID-19, how we, how we managed to prevent and promote and also uh, how the grassroots level workers um, uh, tried to uh, put a place in pe place people in quarantine was a nice example of a, what a good network of preventive care institutions we have island wide and also here i have shown the process and pathway to become a ccp first you have to do the ms screening ms and then you do the msc by research and also then we have md screening md part one and we have moh training md part two MD part uh, and also post MD, SR, and also foreign trade component. Right. So, lastly, to end in a lighter note, don't believe everything that's told about come to medicines. Some of it uh, might not be that true, uh, especially now because news can be randomly generated. The career opportunities and the amount of work are immense. For, uh, in the come to medicine field, but also is the satisfaction. So that's all. Thank you. You can, I will take questions. Okay.